that over there. All right, we're good to go. Uh, Beacon, speak up whenever you would like to. Would you like to start with the... Well, we should probably do an introduction first. Beacon Boy Saves the Day runs Galactic Hauling Solutions, and you guys are the ones doing the flat rate shipping. Uh, and I believe this is uh, anywhere, period, right? Are there limitations on uh, the security space? I think it was low uh, sec, or... Yeah, we, do, we live everywhere but null sec. Correct. Low and high. Um, yep. I presume you don't mess with wormholes, because... We, we don't mess with citadels, is that what you're asking? Oh, I'm talking about wormholes. Oh, wormholes, no. <laughs> right. But high and low. No, high and low is the focus, no. right? I don't think anyone does... Uh, right. Well, I mean, I... <laughs> For I obvious... One, one, I think one does uh, uh, um, uh, the uh, uh, wormholes, but I think it's just Thera, and it was more of a token. Right. Uh, can't, uh, token offering by, I think, Bush X. Now, until we want to show these folks, when you guys are shopping around for hauling options, I'll bring them on the screen here and go to display mode. Uh, welcome to your Eve hauling advisor. So you punch in where you're starting from, where you're going to, the volume in M3, and uh, the collateral is, is it, do you input yeah, what, that? Or? Why, don't we, why, why don't we fill that in? Yeah. Uh, go. Let's try Podion. That's one of my favorites. It's an origin. P-O-D-I-O-N. Mm -hmm. And then Jita. And then we can do a volume of uh, 320,000. Okay. And a uh, sweet spot for us is 4 billion. So yep. you can just punch a billion button there if you want. Or now, is this contingent high sec? No. Uh, that's going to be a low sec to high sec. That's an, an, sure asset, safety system. That's an asset safety system going to uh, the major trade hub. And as you can see, it produces a really nice uh, um, table at the bottom, and it's ordered from cheapest to most expensive. Oh, hey, look where Galactic Calling is. Never would have guessed that Galactic Calling would show up as the top result. <laughs> but it is like a price comparison. That's the whole point of this, is to show... Uh, not only price, but the the service terms in terms of days to complete and things like that. Yeah, there's actually a tie-in with the uh, high-sec buyback. Uh, they're the ones who made the tool. And that's because you guys do a lot of the, the back-end uh, moving and helping them get items from point A to point B as well. And uh, they needed a tool to quickly assess the uh, the best option for them. So this isn't even your tool. That's another point, good point to point out to people is um, this isn't like something you've, you've set up to slants in your favor. This is a tool that a customer of yours made uh, for their own benefit to find out where they can make, you know, gains and efficiencies and and shock yeah, and all. Like, hey, you guys come up to the top every time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Another way of looking at this is uh, they work with us so much because we kept appearing at the top of the table. <laughs> right. Yep. <laughs> again and again and again. Now, a lot of people in, in the Twitch chat are, are very, very familiar with high-sec buybacks. We usually mention them several times a day. Uh, as a great service to use for turning space junk into space bucks. Um, and, and again, go back to the Galactic uh, Hauling Solutions and the, the big draw being the, the flat rate shipping. Like, anytime you can, you can remove complication from, from the process, uh, you're lowering the barrier for, for user utilization, right? Like, and I would also say, uh, never trust the calculator. <laughs> they can hide anything they want in it, and they can make any change they want, and you won't know when you come back. Flat rate's the safest way. Yep, absolutely. So, now, we have some other things we can look at. We can look at the Reddit post. We can look at the, uh, the state of the low sec. Wait, are these, two, are these two different Reddit posts? No. Yeah, well, the, oh, no. the state of uh, low sec jump freighter hauling is an analysis I put together last week. Right, you mentioned uh, this before. And right. it had a few surprising conclusions in it. Okay. So, you, uh, I can go over the... I, I do a lot of narration reading, so I can read the post to Twitch chat if you'd like, uh, or... You can focus us in on the highlights that you want to discuss specifically. Yeah, well, just let me point you real quick. Uh, there's some numbers. You see a little block of numbers at the bottom, and that's the uh, tallies for all of 2023 of all the completed contracts from all the courier services. I believe this is here. Uh, I'll highlight on the so screen. It's up a little me. higher, yeah. There you go. It says Black Frog, yep. Bush X. Yep, there you go. And it even gives you a tally of all the contracts that are moved and comes up uh, in the following paragraphs with some really interesting conclusions. This is what your listeners are going to be interested in, that uh, there's only a 1,000 contracts every month that are low-sec-related, jump freighter-sized. And it's safe to assume that you're inferring that people would kind of assume this would be a higher number, more than, what, 
Uh, yeah, that means there's 30, 30, 30, 35, 30, 35 being made a day uh, and given to these particular courier services. Now, if you look at the final line there, it says public. And that's the number that are going into the public queue, which is even tinier. That's at best 10, 12 a day. If anything, I'd be surprised there were that many going to the public just because of contract scams and things like that. Like, do you think it's easier for some people? Like, okay, I throw this contract up. I know, I know, so and so's likely to grab it, but if someone else wants to, they can do it too. Like, what scenario would somebody want to use a public contract versus an established service like Black Frog, PushX, or obviously in this case? Well, like regardless call. of the courier service, whether it's us or, or, or the other ones uh, who, are, who have their calculators, you you have a price. Uh, when it's public, you can make any price you want. We I do put a cutoff there, you'll notice, that I don't consider anything under $150 million. See, I can count the number of uh, public contracts right. that are created, but I can't count the number that are being actually accepted and delivered. Gotcha. So that 400 there a month or 12 a day, uh, is is a, a ceiling. That's the most that, that public contracts. Okay, yeah, because you fill yeah you filter for an amount, and then okay, these are more likely to actually be uh, interacted with versus. Yeah, and if you put down ten million, they'll never. No one's ever going to accept it. So right, just, uh, <laughs> right. Um, so the thing that is interesting about the public contracts that again I think your listeners might be interested in is if you're starting a jump freighter uh, business. You need approximately, and we can go into this if you want, but or you can take my word for it, uh, 50 contracts a month. Because the main reason is you have all these sign alts that you have to plex for. So you really got to be able to utilize them to a certain level to justify that expense. And if you were trying to get 50 contracts a month, there aren't, uh, you know, that it's, was that support, you know, seven or eight independent to uh, new jump freighter pilots creating businesses that's a pretty small number <laughs> right like you oh, have to have a right. reason to think you're going to push the market right. sufficiently enough to to clear your overhead or yeah, you'd have right. to have an other operating business that was already producing revenue that would float or mitigate the cost of your expansion and jump freighting uh but even then you'd only want to do that so long before you would pr not price yourself out but um, yeah, the, the cost it, of it, it would, it, would push you back out. Right, the economically viable. Um, and, and, and forgive me, it's early in the morning here. I I I have to correct myself. I made a major mistake here. Um, it turns out that was four hundred over five months. It's really eighty a month. <laughs> and and so when I said eighty a month, that means you're talking two to three contracts that are viable in the public queue a day. You that you would need that many to to make the. Uh... No, I'm saying there's that many in the public queue. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. And, and you don't, and you need about two of them uh, to make a viable. To you need two of the two or three a day. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, sorry, sorry, my my math. Is sort of it's powered. early. <laughs> yeah, for me. Yeah. But anyways, the other the other interesting conclusion um, at the bottom of this was. Um, I found out what market share was because if you use those numbers up above, right, uh, you can figure out market share. Uh, so it turns out that Galactic Calling is forty-eight percent of the market, and uh, I knew things were going well last year, but I didn't realize we jumped into the market leader for this particular segment of hauling. Now this is me glancing and, and being bad at math. If Black Frog's doing nearly a thousand and PushX is doing thirteen hundred, and you're a hair ahead of PushX. Um, how's that push into a nearly equal amount of the the, the market share? Well, that's just uh, me trying you... to understand the math. So, so I'm basing it off of the numbers up above that we have highlighted. The number of contracts. Yeah, the, num the numbers we have highlighted up there indicate that probably PushX. I'm I'm going to guess approximately has you know 30 percent of the market, or maybe actually 25 percent of the market. Okay, so these numbers aren't the ones being used to calculate the. the market share penetration right okay gotcha you see the, see the total there the, the, those are all 2023 numbers so so that's everything from the first of the year to now up till now this year gotcha this isn't just a small data set of oh hey yeah we did well last month no we've been doing you know galactic calling has been doing well all year and actually goes all the way into last year where we probably you know became the market leaders and i didn't realize it something that would be interesting to me specifically is 
how has uprising traffic I presume traffic in low second faction warp obviously has gone up with with uh, uprisings release. How did that impact the amount of utilization um, of galactic hauling services in faction warfare well, theaters? Yeah, yeah. Well, if you look at the galactic hauling numbers up there, you'll see there's a a plus one thousand sixty one. Oh, I mean, and yeah, that, okay. That, I, I missed that entirely before right. I got you. Yeah, and that was all from our faction warfare uh, uh, sister organization. So that was a thousand contracts that we've gotten just due to fact. So it's almost warfare. doubled your traffic. <laughs> for... it, it, we we worked. We started working with uh, Faction Warfare uh, Alliance back in uh, June, about just about a year ago, and uh, it has gone wildly successfully and definitely propelled us into the uh, market leader position. Okay, of of that, would you say of the ten sixty one number there? Is the majority of that that one particular point of contact, or what would, you, what would you, I don't know if you well, in your industry neutrality is important. You would I presume do arrangements like that with any faction war organization, but this is the one that you talk to first, or you know develop a relationship with. Um, it, would the, you say this, the, the the ratio of the empire of faction warfare? How's that? We we are uh, leaning heavily with Galante, uh, but. We are neutral and we'll work with anyone. We'll move your stuff. I think the key thing is that the Galante had a particular leader uh, in one of their corps that approached us and we came up with an uh, agreement where we would provide shipping for the whole alliance from their perspective for free. This one person underwrote all delivery costs. Ah, okay. For, right. And, and to be frank... Uh, it went well, obviously, uh, and it was my own inspiration for the CSM run, where I'm now turning to all of Eve, and I'm offering free shipping. Okay, so that so interaction we, there is what, okay, yeah, was the foundation for the whole uh, CSM campaign. We can call it a shill or a gimmick or whatever term we want to use, but that, that inspired the, the design of it, I presume. It, it's a little hard, because... I get a, a certain amount of pushback from the public saying, you know, oh, I don't need free shipping. And, you know, there, there is the requirement to, to create a paid contract to Galactic Calling to be eligible for free shipping, um, where you'll get a free load once a month, once I'm in CSM. Um, and, and, and people say, I'm not sure I, I want, need it or want it. And uh, then I go and I see in my... My the, the alliance, uh, sorry, in the uh, faction warfare alliance, I see just all the ways they've learned to use free shipping, <laughs> and uh, oh, you know, I, I wish there was some way I can convey to everybody and all your listeners just how much free shipping changes your life in Eve. <laughs> That's what we've done with with high sec buyback. Like it's a service you don't realize you need until you have it, and it's like, oh my god, this saved me so many clicks and so much time. <laughs> Exactly. And and it's it's like every time you have something you want to do in EVE, people don't realize this, but hauling underpins all those activities in one form or another. Maybe it's a trivial amount, but it's so nice to just be able to have it done quickly for free. Maybe there could be an argument for also like... Oops, lost my web browser. Um, the comparison. So you, you, you interact with these faction warfare nerds and it's like, man, these guys really utilize this more proactively versus let's say you were talking to a lot of low sec and, and high sec players in general and they're more centralized typically for logistical issues where basically the court manager or maybe you know less than five percent of the membership are in that leadership position who, who handle all that stuff internally and when you're dealing with faction warfare nerds more people even at the line member level are more likely to think in terms of like i need shipping i need stuff moved i need clicks made and things like that is do you think that's the, the identifiable difference between low sec or faction warfare specific uh, play compared to i don't call common or or more usual high sec and, and low sec play where they're more um, insulated with internal concerns or in, internal perspective to, to some extent um but i will point out that uh, the group that you know we made this agreement with and we've done three thousand five hundred contracts for um they they have a full market there, right. and so we've been doing market seeding, and 
that kind of now we're leading leaning over to the traders area and 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 the, and the industry. So the industrialists are are seeing the advantages of this. Uh, they're, they're, it's 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 not just you know jumping in ships and going and doing PvP. Uh, this this free shipping can underpin almost everything. Yeah, it's not just a bring our doctrine from point A to point B. It's also all everything else that goes into support their their efforts. Um, right, because they they'd rather produce it than right. move it. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so that actually brings up a good point too. So um, I almost lost it. It was about the uh, the moving. Oh, yeah. So you're seeding markets now. That that burden, that that quote unquote work, is that. Are you tracking what needs the, the market needs to be seeded with, or is that alliance still doing it and they're just sending the orders to you uh, for what they need from from where and to where? Well, that's the best part about free shipping. You don't have to decide that. It doesn't have to be organized by an individual. Uh, we're seeding that market because many traders are getting involved. Okay, and so the seeding is your of your own initiative, not as a they, client request. Exactly. That's what Why I was not? wondering. Okay. Yeah, why, why not give your why not give your, your 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 members free shipping by showing them how that one paid contract lets them go into other roles where they're like you're saying doing market seating. They're your industrialists. This is free shipping serves as a, a way to let the player do more things and and take and and and, and take the initiative. So is this a result of parsing the, the raw data coming in? Like, all right, well, we see we're hauling a lot of X, Y, and Z. So there's a, a consistent, you know, renewable demand for X, Y, and Z in this location. Um, well, actually, this is an ugly little secret, but I'll, I'll let it out here so all your listeners can hear it. Um, uh, the haulers, us, us haulers, uh, well, uh, we can peak. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why, that's why I was going to, yeah, that's why I was. Right, so, so, so I'm only trying to say that you know, we never hand that information to anybody. Uh, but my point is, I can tell I'm seeding a market when well, I'm doing. At that point, it becomes common yeah. sense. Like, yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I thought it was a great example of you're doing one activity, and all of a sudden, hey, it's a lot of raw data. Yeah. Hey, it's I'm using patterns. Data, it's, <laughs> it's raw data, but it's not anything I ever take advantage of. So I never go and seed the market myself. I, I leave that to the professionals. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the people who are going to be doing on the, on the regular, seeing those opportunities and and leveraging them and. Just doing the thing that makes the most sense. I like to haul, and uh, this is uh, my attempt to continue to be the market leader and to continue to get lots of oh. opportunity to haul and and organize the efforts of a whole group of jump freighter pilots. So, uh, so Bush Kitty is here. Are you familiar with Bush Kitty? I By can't chance? say I am. Like I, I don't have time to spend Twitch chats, but so Bush Kitty streams on Twitch, Eve Online, and he does high set ganking, and he does it from the perspective of talking to his chat about also educating them, like. I'm not out here just farming salt and, and getting, getting, getting tears from people. I'm also talking to Twitch chat and answering questions like, here's what this person could have done differently. Here's how, you know, this approach works and you can you can work around this. And so he's been a huge proponent of high sec buyback. He's like, here's how to not get Bush Kitty. Right, <laughs> Take it off your right. desk, if it on someone else's desk. And uh, and I'm sure you've seen over the years plenty of stories because it, it'd be something that'd be more in your more interest field where you'll see a jump freighter go down and like, if, if they just known what they were doing, if they just knew these tricks that we know, they know these methods that we know, like this could have been avoided. Yeah. Like those, those, those like things that yanked and Eve all the time, things die. It's what it's supposed to work out. But there's a subcategory of that where it's like, this was needless. Like this didn't need to, to have to go down the way that it did. <laughs> uh, yeah, there, there's been a lot of moments like that, but uh, you know, you but someone from the outside sort of... wouldn't know it, right? They would just see another kill mail with juicy numbers on it. And, and, and that's all they see. But from someone who actually yeah, yeah. does this you know, as a main activity, there's going to be certain details that stand out to you as a, as a huge red flag and go, wait, this is completely yeah. avoidable. <laughs> I think you have to look at this in a broader perspective. You know, the, the gankers are serving a purpose. Um, the, the less disciplined, the weaker, uh, the, uh, the weaker haulers, the, the ones that are, are not, you know, necessarily paying as much attention to what's going on. Maybe they even go on autopilot. Um, you know, th they have to be weeded out somehow. And that's what the gankers are doing. It's it's an unfortunate, but you know, Eve is a school of hard knocks. <laughs> and you wouldn't make any risk at all if it was all you know, theme park, uh, easy path from point A to point B. It would it would remove the need for your service. It, well, the, the, the most interesting information is why our uh, jump rear pilots paid so well, 
and uh, a lot of it has to do with those barriers to entry. Uh, I think I just pointed out to you that the public queue has 80 jump freighter size loads that are reasonably priced uh, appear every month, and you need 50 of them to be viable. So right there is a huge, uh, a huge barrier to entry. But in addition to that, uh, there's another barrier to entry of you need a whole Sino network. And then you also need all the knowledge to not get ganked, which really doesn't show up in as many videos as you think. And you develop a routine, and if you're rushing, maybe you skip a few steps and you find out the gankers are there to take advantage of it. So we've got an interesting question from Twitch chat, which by the nature of the question would kind of influence the, the capacity for answer, but they're asking, can you ask him if he considers, if he's ever considered starting paying gankers to get rid of the competition? Because it's a very Eve-like question, right? Um, but if you had ever considered it before, you would never disclose you had active plans to do so, so it's kind of hard to answer in that respect. Or you might have a, uh, a moral high ground, I would never do such a thing, you know? <laughs> but maybe you could expand on the idea of, of a hypothetical. If, if somebody were running a, a jump freighter operation, um, and they wanted to become more hostile with it by pushing out comp competitors. Well, if somebody wanted to push you out, um, what are some yeah, of the yeah, barriers yeah. they'd have to overcome or things they'd have to consider or think about yeah, I, before I going down this one. Okay. Yeah. I, I think one, one point that hasn't been considered is that jump freighters are never in corp. Um, we, we leave them in NPC corps. We have a, a procedure to recontract from a right. contract all And to clarify, that's to avoid war deck interactions, I presume. Yes, yeah, it's okay. for that and other purposes. But, but the main point of that is um, it's hard to identify the other guys. <laughs> it's just a bunch of NPC jump raiders flying around. And uh, so it'd be hard to target anyone. Before they get person. caught, right? Like... Before one actually dies in a jump freighter, it's hard to identify. Oh, this pilot's on, and that kind of thing, right? Well, no, I'm trying to say it, it, the the pilot's in the NPC corp. So if let's just pick a number, you know, if, if there's a push X jump freighter pilot, and and we've done hypothetically what you've said, how would you show that a push X jump freighter pilot went down to you know then make payments or whatever? <laughs> oh, I thought more in terms of people would just watch the character, but I see what you're saying. They wouldn't be able to track the organizations movements but they can only track the the one character would you consider that character burned after a loss or oh, oh yeah certainly if you can identify a character but that's not an easy thing to do um that's my point it, it's it's it, and and to be frank it's really not worth my time i just better better for me to be spending it hauling <laughs> so i guess to tie it back into the original question then uh, so the question was like, you know, what would someone have to do to, to, to gank these? And you're saying, well, it's hard to identify the character in the first place. Um, a lot of full-time gankers will will simply follow the jump freighter back home, right? Like, you have to get Correct. to Jita at some point. Like, I saw you flying a jump freighter to Jita. Now I'm going to track you back to Reed. Your shoot all jump freighters. Yes, yeah. there are definitely groups oh, okay. that do that. Gotcha. Yes. But not targeting because it's really hard to prove. Ah, okay, I see. Their question was, how would, you, how would you take down a, a specific rival uh, yeah, how do I service? Take and you're pointing out, like, well, how would you find out which ones were theirs in the first place? Correct. And, okay. And, and that makes a lot of sense. Regarding the people who take down all my competitors, well, they're going to do what they're going to do anyway. And so they're, they're just as equal to shoot yours, yours as there are theirs. Okay. I got you. Uh, Bushki, also, I, had, I have to add, it's a lot easier for us to have jump... Freighter pilots, Sino alts marked. Oh, so they don't even try to track the. Uh, they try to track the the Sino pilots. Well, actually, the Sino alts could be in corp, and and you know you'll see mine in Ignoitin all the time. Um, well, that's, that's what he's pointing out. Is they, they usually track the Sino alts because they are in corp more frequently. And then sure, sure, you 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 could definitely do that. So if you watch Beacon Boy bring in a jump freighter pilot, jump freighter, you could probably assume that's in corp, and that that's a reasonable statement. But it is starting to be a lot of work. Um, and there is, you know, I only have one of my sign alts, and I have how many? Five in corp. So the other four <laughs> aren't. Um, so I, I think it's a little tougher than they think. Oh, yeah. They were saying it was easy. They were just pointing out, like, for, for like, like I said, Bushki likes to educate people, like Twitch chat people who aren't interacting with stuff on a daily basis. So he just wanted people to know, like, as a, as a rule of thumb, uh, when you are hunting jump freighters, you're hunting the sino pilots more than you're hunting the actual uh, jump freighter right. pilot. Right, I'm sure Beacon Boy's known to most uh, Genki groups. That's for sure. Because the Sino pilot's going to stay in one location as opposed to the jump freighter moving around, right? Like, 
Uh, they both move. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah, I thought the I thought the signos were park and park and leave. But well, you, I was gonna you, say, but you position every, them based on the route you need to run, I presume. Well, every one of my sino alts has nine jump clones. Oh, okay. Gotcha. That makes sense. And yeah. and and part of that is so I can take two or three and flip them to the far side of low sec as the jump freighter is you know approaching, and then reuse it. To you know, do right. a pick up or drop off, you know, in the hinterlands. Yeah, because you're not having to move things so frequently that you need to worry about the 20 hour or whatever cooldown. To... Yeah, yeah, it, it's a once a day thing, you know, for right. that one contract that's way over in that asset safety system on the edge of null sec, and I just need to be there for one moment today. There you go. Uh, Ragnarok with a question in terms of like, I guess, data security. Uh, do they keep the metadata on what is moved from where? Never. It's, uh, again, so contracts complete, and then like, unless you were actively, you know, tracking it or whatever, that information's gone. Yeah, no, no. Uh, yeah, there's certainly been suggestion of that over the years, but in galactic calling, as much as the pilots might peek in there, they're, they're given very clear instructions: you do not reveal the contents of what you're moving to anyone, other than, well, I mean, obviously the owner, um, because we do check. If you're wondering why are we peeking? We have collateral limits, uh, four billion isk. Uh, is yeah, you what, can't you can't verify collateral value if you don't know what you're all. <laughs> right, you have to peek in to see that. And so, if if we suddenly get someone who's shoving nine billion isk into uh, uh, into a contract, we we turn to them and say, you should have split that into two contracts of four billion isk each. Um, no, actually, four billion and maybe seven billion. But you get the point. Um, and for that reason, we peek mainly just to just quickly check, is this within, you know, the collateral limits? Yes, great, good, Boom, and right. away we go. So to answer, or to, to further go on on Ragnarok's question, Bushkey points out, if you know the pilot, the uh, jump fighter pilot, uh, you can check their contract history. Will it show wraps? Details? Yeah, you no, know, uh, if, if you're asking about whether we can see the contents, there's only one time we can see the contents, that's when it's in our hands. As soon as we complete, it goes into the customer's hangar, and we don't know anything. Any, we go back to knowing only that we completed at this time. And, oh, I'm, and I'm sorry, that, Bushke was, I think, more responding to Ragnarok in terms of um, the information that Ragnarok would be seeking with that question. Bushke is saying you could find, if you know the pilot name, because you can see contract history. I don't know how you see a, another character's contract history. Are, they're not public, are they? Would that be a thing? Uh, you can actually see that. He's oh, okay. correct. There you uh, go. If you're in-game, there's a spot where you can list like your finished contract. So you, you can say, show me all my finished contracts. Gotcha. And it'll show it to you. And then you go up to the, to the field where your name appears, and there's a little drop-down. Oh, okay, because it's, it's like not tied to your name. You're, you're inputting a character name. That's why they can switch. Yeah, well, I was going to say, it's, it's a little tricky because it looks like it, this, this field will only show, there's a drop-down, that it'll show just your... That's what I would expect, yeah. <laughs> yeah, or, or your corpse. And so you go, oh, well, there's my two choices, and, and then you stop. But the reality is it's a, it's a typing field. Okay. In addition to being a drop-in field. And so you could type in a person's name there, and then you'll see all their finished contracts. So the pre-fill is just like a convenience thing, but as a an inadvertent result, it also just makes users assume that you're ordering from a menu and these are your however many choices. Well, like I said, it, the UI is a bit odd, so I understand why people get Yeah, <laughs> to say the least, right? <laughs> it, it's a drop-down type in. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And, 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 where, and the thing is, when it does the drop-down... EVE Online it's would never true. have unintuitive UI. Never. <laughs> no, no. And, and don't even get me started because that's one of my biggest CM, C, CSM platforms or, or planks in my platform, and that is the contract mechanism has got to be redone. There's so much uh, potential in it, and the fact that there's only uh, 80 jump for your size uh, loads in the public queue shows you that it needs to be utilized more it needs to be easier for people to use. It needs to offer more potential. It needs to be safer to use so people aren't so worried about what they're doing when they're setting up their first contract. So another question then about the uh, the CSM bit, like <laughs> CSC Souls is already, already grumpily getting into it. So let's do the CSM pitch because we, we have about 20 minutes before I, I raid Vinny and I don't wanna not have the CSM pitch. Um, how would you like that inter introduced? Well, uh, the reality is I want to emphasize that when you vote 
in CSM, you get someone with wild ideas, and they probably can't do every, get everything done that they'd like done. Uh, I mean, how much do we ever really affect what CCP does? Because they're coming out. It's with one of the land. most bizarre things I see every single year. There's no like, an unending supply of optimistic people with their hearts in their sleeves. Like, I'm going to go to the CSM and I'm going to save Eve, and it's like how? And I guess they're usually newer people, not newer as in like only playing for three weeks, but like. They haven't, they haven't seen the decade perspective of, like, I'm going into CSM to tell CCP how to fix their game. And instead, they learn that they're there to listen and that they're a focused feedback group about topics yeah. usually specifically that CCP wants to talk about. And Yeah, they, they, they listen, uh, they make comments, and then they're ignored. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I, I understand my role uh, if I got into CSM. Or if you have a specialized background, you're usually giving feedback on how their plans are affected by or affect the, the the specialized background that you're you're able to speak from right and and in my case i would obviously be advocating for the shippers the haulers the traders the industrialists and and i do think there is something i i, I can bring to the table um i understand how complex what i'm being asked to or, or sorry, what i'm asking for I, I understand how complex it is so I've certainly ordered all the things I'd like to see changed from easiest to implement to hardest and and focused on the easiest to implement end of it where a small change ends up benefiting a very large number of players or opens up a whole new type of trading. Um, a perfect example of this would be uh, I'd like to show them how a hybrid uh, contract, one that is both an item exchange and a courier service, could be the basis of a whole futures market where you know you can start being speculative about what do you think the price of something will be next month. Okay, I can see that. Like having the item for, let's say from my own perspective, intact armor plates. Like, okay, I have, I have a thousand intact armor plates today that I'm going to put up for sale uh, in advance. Uh, even, are you saying I don't have to have them yet, or I do have to have them already? That's well, scenario. this hybrid contract, would you be specifying, I want these items at this place, at this price, Okay. and I want it in four weeks. Okay. And then it's up to the person who accepts it. Oh, I see. It. We were still using in-game. That's what I'm always worried about whenever I hear about new mechanics. It's like, we got to use tech that we already have. And in this situation, you do have tech that you already have. You just need a, a longer-term contract with... Uh, pre-filled item for being able to be well I, I'm, I'm trying to say no i'd like this one to be in game because that's the only one that you can't you know ever well i mean you can build this out of out of currently existing tech like it's not completely right from that's the ground my up point. You know, everything's in yeah. the hands everything's in the hands of ccp already you just need to put it together a little differently and it'll offer a lot to the customer uh, to the players and you say point. that knowing that that letting those two pieces touch each other could just break the entire thing but that's that's the nature of anything we're trying to Everyone yeah, pitches yeah. an idea. These are ideas. These are like what ifs. These are like, would it be nice if, if this was a thing? Not a right. uh, doom and gloom. Right. You sucks because I don't have my shiny toy I want. You know, <laughs> that's a lot of Yeah, and that's one nice part about you know putting me in CSM. I don't have a, an agenda, so the politics of this aren't. You know, I'm not going to be the person sitting there and you know. You're not trying to put Black Frog and, and Push X out of business for three years. CSM. Right? Well, we're, we're the market leaders already, so I think I've got to that point already. That brings up a good point, too. So would you like to see, as it's, as it's your, your main activity, would you like to see a less centralized hauling meta? Would you like there to be a, a stronger backbone within the game? Like, we have public contracts, that's fine, but there's a lot of room for improvement, right? In terms of oh, accessibility. What, what and... That, yeah, one place I can see some real improvement is what, what I personally implemented in Galactic Hauling years ago, and uh, it, it's been taken down in the last few months, but but uh, we, for years, showed everyone all our completed contracts, where all the customer data was stripped out, you know, and where the specific start and end were stripped out, and all that remained was the start and end region. So you can see sort of sanitized data broadly across seven years, 14,000 contracts. And my point is, I know exactly how hard it is to implement that because I did it. It's fairly straightforward. Uh, but my, but if CCP did this across all public contracts, it would be a huge service to people, because then for the starting region and the ending region and this much collateral, they could sort 
all public contracts, if CCP made them available and gave them this, this simple sorting tool and figure out what market rates are. And they'd be able to more easily identify niches that could fill. Well, I'm actually trying to say I, I'm a moderator in Hauler's channel. And the number one question we get from anyone who shows up besides how to make a contract right. <laughs> is, um, you know, how much should I pay? And we there's a vague you know, statement of, you know, one million per, bu per per billion of collateral per jump. And that works fine for high sec. Uh, well, to some degree. But my point is, what they really want to know is, what is the market rates from Cheetah to Amar? Yeah. And you could pull this up, filter out everything but that, get an average number and say, it's currently this in the last two weeks, ah, okay. 13 million. Maybe pinging and the this API or ESI or whatever for, for the data that's already in the game. Like, well, right now people are, are offering this or asking this. Right, and you can look at what's currently being done, but you know, one be if you could just go back a few weeks or back a month. Well, there's a good first question there from Phil: is what keeps people from uh, putting up a contract to skew that number, right? Because players are going to try and break things as soon as they can. So yeah, yeah, certainly, certainly, I, and, and because they'd only be looking at completed contracts. So his ah, point was okay. Is going back a certain number of days, I presume. Yeah, so give me all the completed contracts from the last, you know, uh, and and he he can go one step further and he can say he can both um, make a make, make know, a one is contract to tank it and complete it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but then now he's going to start being on the hook to move a lot or fail a lot. Take your choice, right? Right. <laughs> Let me think back while I was but but I'm not claiming it's a bulletproof thing. It's just a better way of coming up with a a market. Uh, uh, market rate. Well, we run into that issue with the LP system, right? Like, I get asked all the time, well, okay, well, what's my LP worth? Like, that's a great question. Couldn't tell you. Like, there's websites that tell you. There's websites that will tell you different pieces of information that you then still have to put together into a, an action plan to actually convert your LP uh, into ISK. And that's always been a challenge barrier that I see overlap with on the whole. Well, what should I be charging per jump per, per M3 or whatever? And like you said, like, it depends on the value of the cargo you're hauling and, you know, like, type of space you're going through and it's hard to give a, a hard number it's, it, all you can usually do is give a ballpark right that's that's from person interacting to person that's not even like in-game tool spinning out a a figure yeah it, by the way since you have it up there um i do have a, a post on the forums where i pre-announced uh the csm run and it has the details of uh you know what's what's in my platform it's it's a little light right now i'm, I'm in the midst of flushing it out i got months they haven't even announced it but uh, if people want a, a, a preview, uh, it's it's in there. I, I linked to it. it. You said hide it up. Are you putting it on? Uh, I, I linked it in, in, in gotcha. the Discord for you. Yeah. Let's go here. Yeah, because I want to make sure we got the CSM pitch in before the end of the block. Let's see. So I, I like how you start off with the TLDR. <laughs> a lot of people put it at the end of their their post and it's like, nope, here's the short version. <laughs> So if you well, and I have that uh, attention grabbing title too, right? Right. Turn your CSM vote into free shipping. That's right. See, see, that's my point. You can go vote for one of these other CSM guys, and they'll give you pie in the sky dreams that can never be implemented. And and, and they're giving you all the banner you... wagging or banner flag wa waving of uh, you know, send me to CSM guys, and I'll change the game forever. It's like mm, measure your expectations yeah. and get something tangible in game at the same time. Right. Like, yeah. Or service. Get something for yourself. Get yourself free shipping. It's all very easy. If you're about ready to spend two hundred ten million any time between now and September, and if Acid it, is out there, Acid is is a known member of a space cult, uh, which is why I refer you know all basically in the organization and Eve. They're all the ones that tell you, like the ones that send out the 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 in game mail that says, "Hey, here's your ballot. Here's your voting for." You know, there's <laughs> me, Ring. Oh, exactly. That's, Acid. That's, now that's you can plug fine. one of those that's modules fine. out, put in Beacon Boy, and right. And right, then the top boom, one, please. you get the, the, the yeah. top one. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> because because the rest of your check down isn't going to affect the rest of the ballot that much. Right. You still have nine of the ten, yep. and now you got something for yourself. Yep. <laughs> so, what would what would your so my, my perception is the majority of CSM voters are in established large organizations. Period. Whether it's Null, whether it's Faction Warfare, whether it's Wormhole, whatever, the majority of them. My perception is that most of the CSM voters are in large null blocks. Is that a fair assumption, or am I, am I off target? Uh, somewhat. Um, I will point out that I'm currently in talks with one of the null sec alliances, not necessarily the biggest one, or the biggest, the biggest couple, um, 
to integrate free shipping into their logistical operations. Which and would I'm be not going to reveal any details, but the reality is uh, we're ready to enhance this and, and work with their existing uh, haulers, uh, and, and they can capitalize on free shipping. Well, that kind of heads off my next question, because my next question was going to be, knowing that the majority of the, vote, the voter base are, are line members, right, being told how to vote and who to vote for, how does, this, how does the free shipping benefit a line member in a large organization that, again, from my assumption, I don't know if this to be true or not, you can probably put more light onto it, I presume that person isn't using any kind of shipping thing because it's all in-house. But if you're going to be able to, at least with this, this first example, um, involve yourself yeah. in their logistical chain, then... Right. You, you got the idea. So, so now their haulers have to bring the cargo to the edge of low second, give it to us, and we'll bring it the rest of the way. Makes it easier on their haulers. They love that. So outside of that arrangement, let's say go to another nameless block of players who, again, what is the line member's uh, perceived valuation of the free shipping? Me, me, I'm asking from a point of, of ignorance because sure, I'm lazy. Just, Every Any group I've yeah. ever been in, like, if you're not hauling my stuff for me, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> Well, not only can can the free shipping, you know, potentially help, you know, ease the pain of getting things uh, cheaply to to market, uh, but hey, it's in the hands of the actual line member. Maybe he wants to do something else too. So, that could be a perception I don't have. Like we, you've already pointed out, how there was a huge uptick in low sec activity for you once you'd made that contact point, and we've seen the faction warfare players being a lot more. Um, solo active in a way in terms of like problem solving they handled more of their own logistics as opposed to being reliant upon a centralized um one way and one way out type of system right like those players are more more capable more aware may, more able to to get things done that way maybe right. maybe i'm under my perception of an f1 member is basically someone else is running their account for them they're like they're like a legal bot and and I'm dehumanizing F1 members or line members a lot right now. <laughs> like, I assume they do nothing but log in, crap the way they were taught to, uh, show up for the fleet that they were told to be in being, being, being pinged for, and then they, you know, they don't have any other interaction with the client than that. Uh, and maybe that's unfair. I, I don't know. Maybe ask could give some perspective on that. But uh, I wondered if that person who has a very narrow awareness of the game, because they've been you know, teleported from high sec to null sec and plugged into a system, would then have the free thought capability of benefiting from, from you know, player services, basically. Well, and also think of it from the leader's perspective, too. If you're the head of a null cycle uh, alliance and you're giving a directive, we're going to try a new program and we're going, or new doctrine or whatever you want to call it, and, and we're going to bring all this stuff down and hand it out, uh, they can now actually distribute that work back to the line members and say, just, you know, it's in their benefit to get them more aware of, of the things they can do. Right. We got you. We definitely saw some big benefits in that Faction Warfare Alliance where uh, you know, operations were able to be done because they turned it over to us and we got it all there quickly. Or it could be the other model where they want their individual, the individual members to each get it and deliver it because we also did in that case uh, load consolidation. That's not something Galactic Calling offers, but you know it, it's something that we, we, our sister organization did. And Citadel Delivery was another thing that was on the table too. Um, so it really opened doors both for our customers, our you know the, their line members, and even us to operate and do things simply and efficiently. Now, there's a ceiling on how much information people can parse it, generally speaking, you know, off the cuff and at, at an immediate moment. As a landing point, if people want to look into this more later on, the in-game channel is GHSOL. Is that correct? That is correct. Come on over to channel GHSOL, and I'm ready to talk with you about anything. <laughs> oh, man, Solstice, they, they took the bait. <laughs> I'm teasing somebody in Twitch chat. Um, I'm bringing up GSOL in, in, on the screen here so you can see, or so they can see. I wonder if I can change the font size in this window. We'll have to find out. Uh, go ahead if you have anything else you want to add. I just wanted to see if I can bump this up at all. Does that work? Nope, not at all. I put a message to you there. I see it. I'm not sure why it didn't show up. There it is. Yeah, yep. Uh, see, we look forward to moving your cargo. All contracts are there. Details on instructions. Uh, run for CSMs are detailed there. Very good. Yep, that's what I was looking to see. I wanted to see if I can make the font larger in that window, but... 
So you can see the instructions to create the contract are really straightforward. <laughs> uh, and the fact that it's flat rate makes it very easy. Um, and then I did put in a big block there at the bottom because before it was just that little bit at the top. Now there's this big blue blotch you know, to help people uh, get their questions answered. And they're free to ask me, but I'm hoping they'll look at the FAQ too. <laughs> right, yeah, they always hope like, well, here's the answer. Nope, they have to have the interaction. Okay, here I am. You know, <laughs> you walk into it. <laughs> now, yeah, you and mentioned before that, so CSM elections have been pushed back, right? We're correct. usually well into the, into the campaign season by now. Um, have there been any details about a timetable, or is it still uh, wait and see? Supposedly July, and okay. uh, the final vote's going to be in September, I assume, before FanFest, and the winners will be announced, I imagine, at FanFest. I got the impression that they shifted FanFest, and that's why the whole ah, election okay. shifted. okay, gotcha. Yeah, they wanted to incorporate it as another part of the festivities. Right. And and by the way, if you don't mind me just stepping back to the other, uh, uh, to the earlier moment in our conversation, you said, you, you know, NullSec alliances affect the election. And, and I agree. Uh, I do have an idea of how many votes I need to be competitive, and that's around 2,000. Yep, that's the numbers I come up with before where, so in previous years, for Twitch chat to troll me, I was like, all right, I'll run for CSM. If we reach this ridiculous, you know, shill goal, and uh, but in the back of my my mind, because uh, I was marking it, I was like, and if if I have to do it, guys, I'm gonna make a really good concerted effort. Like I know what needs to have happen, and I was gonna work out the shill math to being like, all right, guys, this is how much money it will cost to activate enough accounts to just vote myself in, <laughs> or you guys do it yourselves. I don't care which one, but that that was the math I had worked out too. Is it takes about two k votes to. So, and, and my reason for money. mentioning the two thousand is this is a, a sort of if you ever remember. The old telephone company, MCI, a friends and family type program where it ends up being grassroots and pulls more and more people and see, Rushlock, you can get free shipping for yourself. And when you go and tell 10 people, they get free shipping for themselves and it doesn't affect your free shipping. And you have the easy campaigning uh, line of, hey, do you want to learn about free shipping? I've done it. <laughs> right. So this is definitely sort of a grassroots effort, and it'll be interesting to see how well it expands. Um, and the one other thing I really wanted to assure your, your listeners is this. I, I've done large-scale shipping. Like I said, 3,500 for this uh, firmware alliance. I've been recruiting uh, jump rear pilots for the last few months to build out my capacity so we're ready in September. So when the win occurs, and I like to say win, not if, um, we're ready to take a huge amount of contracts. Yeah, because you'd, you'd be upscaling so far that, yeah, we, we, we've talked about this probably off air before where, like, the, the influx, and if you're able to almost effectively double your traffic with that faction warfare contact, then you obviously have a, a, a firm awareness of what will scale up with, with uh, success of the, the free shipping. And the reality is it's not going to be the worst case. It's not like every last person is going to use three. All That's my next question. Will. I was going to say, what is your analysis of percentages, right? So X number of votes, you know, we can't calculate that ahead of time. But what would you anticipate um, or forecast the ratio of, of people um, taking advantage of the free shipping? Like 40%, 30%, 80%? Like what were... What's your projection at? If you if you well, can share I, I talk about the one hundred percent worst case, but right. but yeah, I do agree. I, I for forecast more like thirty to forty percent, and that's the other thing. People aren't always going to use their free load every month. You right. see what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. Um, but I do have one. I mean, we're we're getting towards the end, so stop me if I'm I'm going into details too much. But we do have one constraint, and that is no transfers. So if you're yeah. you know. Some, uh, but now I'm playing know, this character farmer. instead. That's a you problem. You know? <laughs> well, I'm just saying, no, no, if you're a skill farmer and you go get 100 of these, you're not going to be able to turn over 100 alts to someone else and, and say, here, here's an instant shipping organization. See my point? For right. free. Right. Right. So uh, we, we do have a no transfer policy. Uh, you know, It's very straightforward because we like to keep it simple. Uh, if you want the free loads moved, do it with the uh, make your first paid contract with the same alt because you're going to have to use the same alt. Our list of completed contracts shows us who's getting the, the free load. Right. All right. Well, thank you again for joining us. If there's anything else you wanted to plug at the end, let me know. Otherwise, I'll prep for my. Raid. I'm all set. Thanks for having me on. No, absolutely. Thank you for taking the time. I'm waking up early. <laughs> no worries. Have a all good right. Day. Have a good day.